guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have 45 new makeup products that I am going to be speed reviewing for you today. So I guess they're not really new, actually. But these are all products that I have tested in multiple ways, with multiple products, and multiple techniques. And I'm here to give you my final thoughts on them. All of these have been featured in previous videos, and I promised you in those videos they would be back for a speed review round. So here we are. Now, I think the last one that I did was 45 products and I just lied, I remember, I added a product back last second. So this is 46 speed reviews. So um, we're gonna have to get straight into it. We're gonna start off with the complexion. So I have three setting sprays to talk about today. All of them are of the hydrating nature, if that's what you're into. So the first one that I have is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is Charlotte's Magic Hydrator Mist. I do like it. I don't think it's anything special enough to justify the price point, meaning I'm going to be using this to hydrate my skin, just spray it on before makeup. It's really great for more drying foundations, but when I run out of it, I probably won't be repurchasing it because I do have a lot of other great hydrating mists that I enjoy. So this one is definitely very nice, but there really isn't anything special to justify that price point. The next one that I have, I feel like is more of a justifiable price point and the packaging is so cute. So this is from Trixie Cosmetics. It's the first base priming spray. They have two other sprays, like a glowing spray and a longwear spray. I haven't tested those to their full potential yet, but this one I've been using, I actually really like it because if you like that sticky kind of base, this leaves a little bit of a tack behind, so it's perfect for makeup, but don't overspray your face because it actually can make makeup last less long because I feel like the hydration can be a little bit too much, a little bit too heavy for products to hold on to for long. So as long as it's just a subtle mist, you're going to get a very pretty glow to the face, you're going to get a nice grip, but don't overdo it with this product, but I think it's really, really nice. And then the last one that I have is from Kali Ray, which is an underrated brand in my opinion. This is a surf proof setting spray. It's supposed to help with hydration and long wear. I think it helps with hydration. I really really cannot speak on long wear. I don't think it does too much because I don't think a setting spray or a spray can be hydrating and help with long wear. So I feel like this helps more on the hydrating front. I have four foundations that I'm ready to get back to you on. So the first one is a tinted moisturizer and this is from Good Old Smashbox. This is the Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. I love this. I feel like not enough people are talking about this. And this has very similar characteristics of a lot of the skincare-y, well, skincare-infused skin-like foundations that are really trending right now, but is like better. It gives a really nice glow to the face. I have it on this side of my face and I just feel like it looks truly skin-like, but with a little glow. And for it being a tinted moisturizer, it actually does have quite a good amount of coverage. Definitely an underrated product on the market. So if you want a tinted moisturizer that has some coverage, I definitely recommend this Smashbox one. Do keep in mind though that if you have very porous skin, this does kind of settle into the skin so it's not great over pores. So definitely apply a pore blurring primer before this, but other than that, love it. Now the next one that I've been testing has very similar claims. It's not a tinted moisturizer, but the REM Beauty Foundation has been getting a lot of praise for its skincare infused ingredients. Now I did recently test this literally in a video this week, but I filmed that video a few weeks ago. So I have been testing this a lot more than it seems since I first introduced this to my channel. Yeah, I mean, I like this foundation. I went side by side with the Smashbox versus the REM. Honestly, I prefer the Smashbox side. I felt like the REM was catching on to my hairs on my face a little bit more and it was sitting just a little bit more on top, which is funny because before I compared this to any other foundation, I did feel like it looked very skin-like and it's been getting praise for having a skin-like finish and it is, but there is better out there. So overall, I would consider this to be a solid foundation. I don't think it wears bad, but it doesn't wear great. Like at the end of the day, I'm not looking at a mirror and going, oh my gosh, my makeup looks great. It just wears fine. So this is more of like an everyday foundation kind of vibe, which I do like. It does provide a medium coverage and does have kind of a skin-like appearance. So I, I think it's a bit overhyped. 
I'm not reaching for this concealer on a bad skin day. Let me put it that way, but it's fine. It gets the job done. Next up, I have from Glossier, which I have been loving. This is their Stretch Fluid Foundation, and I just feel like this really helped finish off or complete their line because they were definitely missing a product with coverage, and I do get their whole shtick is that lightweight, natural, my skin but better look, but some of us... Okay, we need our skin to look a lot better. So if you have redness, discoloration, and you're looking for a Glossier product, this is going to be the one for you. It does give that healthy skin-like look, but it provides coverage. So I do feel like it still fits within the Glossier line great because you have really clean, moisturized looking skin that this gives you, but it gives like a medium coverage. So we like this one a lot and it wears pretty good as well. I would say it's probably my favorite foundation that I'm talking about in today's video. And then the last one that I have is quite good. It did take me a while to figure it out, but this is the Yensa Super Serum Silk Foundation. It's very similar to the REM in that when I put it on, it looks really nice. It looks really skin-like. I find this one to be a little bit more blurring than the REM foundation, so I do think I prefer the way that this sits into the skin. The only thing is, it's the same kind of wear with the REM, where it's not an amazing long-wearing foundation, so at the end of the day, I'm not in love with how my skin looks, but... Again, it's not bad. If I prep properly, if I use my favorite powders, my favorite concealers, it's fine. But I really like this foundation up until the wear. So the wear is the biggest con of this, but I think it looks beautiful, milky, hydrating, and delicious on the skin throughout the day until the very end. So this one I think is really, really nice, but don't wear this out on a long day. <laughs> Remember how we had that crazy month of concealer launches? I'm here with the final two. So the first one that I have is the Gucci Beauty and I have been loving this. Now it definitely is a treat yourself product, but it has a very thin lightweight feel to it and almost, it has like a semi powder dry down. You don't really need to set this. I still recommend to because it's not a complete dry down, but you're gonna survive your day without setting this because it's so lightweight and I do feel like it gives a nice blurred effect. I've heard mixed results from some of you with more mature under eyes. So some of you have said it has kind of gone into the fine lines and some of you says it has completely blurred those fine lines. So I'm not really sure how to explain this for mature skin based on how I was wearing it and testing it. I would think that this would be great for mature skin, but. I think the results of this have been overwhelmingly positive for most people. It's just really lightweight. I find it does really well over fine lines and it has almost a dry down to it where it's self-setting. So I love this. I feel like kind of the opposite concealer is the House Labs concealer. Really full coverage has quite a thick consistency so it takes a little bit of work to blend it out but I love 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 the coverage that this gives and it continues a hydrated look throughout the day so yeah if you want something hydrating yet still full coverage I think the house labs is going to be the way to go if you're not offended by a thicker consistency setting powders so this one has been kind of under the radar but I've been using it every single day because it's been one of my only setting powders in my to test drawer. So this is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Loose Setting Powder and this is definitely solid and it definitely completes the Milk Makeup line. I would say if you are looking for a powder specifically from Milk Makeup, you won't be disappointed. It's pretty lightweight, relatively blurring. It gets the job done. Now, am I going to be reaching for this over my favorite powders? No, but it's still a good one. I have been making a little bit of a fuss lately about these Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch powders, and they're very, very good. I'm just a little disappointed because I literally thought it was going to be a pressed version of my favorite loose setting powder from Huda Beauty, and it's not. It has like a sheen in there, which is the opposite of blurring, if I'm being honest, but what this is great for is adding brightness and kind of highlighting the face so I noticed that sometimes when I do my makeup you know how you lose that brightness towards the end of it when it's all said and done I like to go in with this to kind of clean things up so once I'm done with my makeup do you see how that just added brightness right back into the under eye and then I'll also kind of clean up some bronzer or contour that I might have over blended and that's how I go with this I normally go in with this to finish and add that extra bit of brightness and for that purpose it's really really nice but I am disappointed because I feel like she started off 
the advertisements by saying this is basically the loose powder and press form and that just wasn't the case i feel like she steered away from that marketing because we was all kind of complaining but yeah that's kind of what i thought she insinuated in the beginning there of her marketing okay we're into cream products starting off with this cream bronzer from the shade yensa and i think the formula of this is fine i use the shade sunlight glow which is a little bit light so it's the hint like a, a teeny bit too light for me so i have to build up too much product which you want to be careful with doing that in terms of creams because it can get a little heavy on the face but the cream itself is quite nice. It's not too oily. It's a fine product. Again, am I reaching for it over my favorite cream bronzers? No, but I, I'm not mad with the time that I did have with it sitting in my to test drawer. But I don't know how much use it's going to get beyond this point. Ooh, you know what? This one was kind of a shocker to me. I did not expect to like this as much as I did. So this is from... Gwen Stefani's makeup brand. Is it Give? I don't know what it's called, but I was very curious one day, so I ordered a bunch of stuff from Sephora from the brand, and there's still a couple products that I'm testing, so those will be in future speed reviews, but this is the Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo in Pick It Up slash Toastin. So you'll notice the top here has a cream bronzer, the bottom here has a powder bronzer. I've been loving this, so this adds a good amount of pigment. It's a little sticky, but it still blends out really nice. And then this also is the perfect topper. How convenient has this been? I've been loving having this in my speed reviews drawer. So I'm not going to say these are the most best products out there on the market. But the duo here is very convenient. And I've really liked this color on myself. So I've enjoyed this a lot. So I definitely recommend this from the brand. I talked about this recently, but this is a new brand that just came to Sephora called Mango People. And so pretty much the only thing that they have in their brand right now are cream sticks. So bronzer, blush, and highlight, they do have various colors available. These were sent to me, but unfortunately, I'm just not in love with this line. So I have the shade Chai in the bronzer. It's a little stiff, you guys. It does blend out, and it works better if you have a really hydrated face, but don't raw dog this on your face because it just, there's a lot of drag. You can get it to work. What I don't like is I can't warm it up on the back of my hand and go in with a brush. It's not creamy enough for that, nor is it creamy enough to go just right directly on the product and put it on the skin. It doesn't pick up. It's not creamy enough for me. It can get the job done. You're fine drawing it on the face. It doesn't disrupt anything underneath. And then with a stiffer brush, you can blend it out. And it's fine. It looks fine. It wears fine. Gets the job done. But it's not a satisfying experience. I'm looking for satisfaction when it comes to my makeup. This one doesn't give it to me, nor does the blush, though I will hand it to the blush here. It does have a little bit more longevity due to that stickiness that I was talking about, but that does carry over from the bronzer here. So yeah, longevity on this is good, but not satisfying. Too much drag. I feel like it pulls my cheek, just drags over the skin whenever I have to use this. And then the last product that they have, of course, is the highlight. Now, the highlight is my favorite of the three formulas. This is the Morning Light Highlight. Now, this particular shade, it's pretty sheer, but it adds just this juiciness to the skin. It goes great over powder. I'm not a big cream highlight fan, if you're familiar with my channel. So this isn't something that I'm going to be reaching for on a regular basis, but I like it. It's juicy. It's fine. For a cream highlight, if you like almost a translucentness to it, I think you will like this. Okay, and then I have this cream blush from Nude Sticks, which I've been loving. This is a new formulation from them. It's their Nudies Matte and Glow Core All Over Face Blush Color. So you'll know it's this new formula because it has like a little bit of like a moisture core in here, which is supposed to be good for hydration of the cheeks. And this does have a glowy finish on the cheeks, which is really, really pretty. And I love this color, Rose Glow. So yeah, I just love applying this to the cheek, using my finger, blending it out. It adds a beautiful, juicy look to the cheek. So my love for Nude Six blushes continues with this. I also have this cream blush formula, which I've talked about a lot 
but I have two new shades that I've been using. So this is the Hourglass Vanish Cream Blush, and the two new shades that I've tested out, the first one here is Loyal, which is this mauve pink color, and then the second one is Devoted, which is the one I used today. It's a little bit more of a lighter pink. I love this formula. It's very easy to use. It's very long-lasting. It's like everything I would want in a cream blush. That being said, it is Hourglass. It is a pricier formula. You have to want to treat yourself in order to purchase this, but if you do treat yourself, I think you'll like it. I would say, you know what, when these launched, these were more special. Cream blushes weren't on the forefront of the market. Now they're everywhere. At this point, are these the greatest cream blushes? No, and they're more they're expensive. So I think with all of the great cream blushes that have come out, they stand out a lot less in the market and are less worth the money. But I still do enjoy reaching for these. Powder blushes. So I'm surprised this one doesn't have a cream like the bronzer duo, but this is also from Gwen Stefani's makeup brand. This is the Feelin' Cheeky and Stars Aligned Amplifying Blush Duo. So both of these are powder, but the top shade has more of a sheen. The bottom shade's a little bit more of a satin. These are very, very pretty, solid blush formulation. I've enjoyed putting these on. I've enjoyed having the Gwen Stefani blushes in my drawer, but you know what, they're good. But they're powder blushes, so that's all I can say about this. This is like a pretty, it's, it's a warm color, but I swear there's a little bit of pinkiness in there. And then, oh my god, I'm kind of sad that these are leaving my speed reviews drawers because these have just been the great finishing touches to my cheeks. So these are the Bare Minerals Highlighting Blush. For me, they have a true highlight finish, but they're kind of more blushy in color. So what I like to do with this is have it be the bridge between my blush and my highlight. I don't really like the look of it all over my cheek because the shimmer's a little strong, you know, the highlighting aspect is not great for those of us with textured skin or pores, but it has a buttery blend to it, a buttery feel to the touch, and the finish of it is so great for blending your blush and highlight together. If you notice they don't look as seamless, go in with an in-between shade of this, beautiful. Sometimes, if my cheeks are looking a little dry, I will super lightly and delicately tap in here and then put it all over the cheek, but really, really light-handed. And there, there are lighter shades in here, like Rose Glow, which sometimes I will just use as a highlight. I love the versatility of these products. This is definitely one of my favorite items from Bare Minerals. I, I totally recommend it, I really do. And then I have this blush quad, cheek quad that I need to get out of my drawer. So this has been sitting in my drawer and I stopped using it because so much holiday cheek palettes have come out, but before that I was using this nonstop. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm face palette and this is a re-review. So I got a fresh one sent to me and I like these speed reviews because I like coming back and reviewing older makeup in 2023. So I just, I don't know, I like talking about things that I'm retrying. So this Nudegasm face palette is very nice. I, I do think kind of going back, right? She's a bit expensive for what she is. These formulas, they, they're a little difficult to pick up. You definitely have to use like a synthetic brush or sometimes like a natural hair brush that has a little bit of density to it. The cheek color is beautiful. The highlight color is beautiful. This creates a really glowing goddess Charlotte Tilbury-esque kind of look. I think going back, looking at it now in 2023, sure, it's probably kind of overpriced. It is overpriced, but I still do really love the look that this gives on my cheeks. And we're gonna have to go into part two because 46 products is going to make me pass out and my husband who edits these. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish off with like the creme de la creme of all of these face products. The reason I stopped using my Charlotte Tilbury New Gasm palettes because I reached for these nonstop as I knew that I would. These are my favorite cheek products. They're my favorite investment and they're worth it for me every year because I do use these all the time. I know they're not gonna be for everybody because honey, they are $90 a pop, <sighs> but I love them. I will die on this hill telling you how much I love them. I have a full review if you want all of the details, how to use them, but let's talk about some of my favorites. So my all-time favorite one, the one that I've been reaching for is the one that had like all of the colors that I would like had in my collection, but the leopard one, it's just the best 
for my skin tone. I love the bronzer, the blush, everything about this one I haven't been able to put down. I've also been reaching for the Jellyfish for more of a pink look, a little bit more of a bright look. If I'm wearing more natural makeup, the Jellyfish is my go-to. Have not been reaching as much for the Snake. You will find me going in here for mostly for blush colors because this was not intended for my skin tone, but I still love it, you guys. So my thing with these, yes, they're $90, but no other brand has been able to replicate this formula. Truly a gorgeous, unique formula. I'm gonna get off the mountain that I've climbed up and continue to be giving you a speech about with these, um, but I love them. And they're my favorite launch still of the holiday season. So I'm gonna finish off here. Stay tuned for part two, which will be posted tomorrow. And it's going to be for the eyes and lips category. We have a lot of good products. I have all that is on my eyes and my lips in tomorrow's video. So make sure you stay tuned. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.